Hello, I'm Sumit Jandal for The Developer Show. This is your weekly update on the coolest developer news from Google. The new Google Play console is ready to come out of beta. This means that the old Play console will be discontinued starting November 2nd, 2020. After this date, you'll be automatically directed to the new Play console when you log into your account. The new Play console's responsive design means that you can use it across all of your devices, and the new navigation makes it easier to find and understand important features. Learn all about the new improvements and try it out for yourself by following the link in the description below or by swiping up on Instagram. We're launching Android 11 on Android TV to bring the latest platform features to the big screen. Android 11 on Android TV introduces performance improvements like enhanced memory management and privacy improvements like one-time permissions. Android 11 also emphasizes media with new features like auto low latency mode and allows greater control over TV functions with extended gamepad support, OEM configurable weight keys, and more. Check out the post for more on all the new features and info on how to get started. We're excited to announce the Device Access Console is available. The Device Access program currently allows qualified partners to integrate directly with Nest devices, enable control of thermostats, access and view camera feeds, and receive doorbell notifications with images. All qualified partner solutions and services will require end user consent before being able to access, control, and manage Nest devices as part of their service offerings, either through a partner client app or service platform. If you're a developer or a Nest user interested in the device access program or access to the sandbox development environment, check out the post for more info. We're pleased to announce the alpha release of Flutter support for Windows. Native desktop support opens up a variety of exciting possibilities for Flutter, including improved developer tooling, reduced friction for new users, and of course, apps that can reach any device a user might have from a single code base. Check out the post for sample apps, a Flutter for Windows getting started guide, and links to community plugins and resources. PyTorch XLA support for cloud TPUs is now generally available. This means PyTorch users can access large-scale, low-cost cloud TPU hardware accelerators using a stable and well-supported PyTorch integration. To help you get started with PyTorch XLA, Google Cloud supports a growing set of open-source implementations of widely used deep learning models and associated tutorials. You can find those linked on the post along with a new deep learning VM image that has PyTorch XLA pre-installed along with PyTorch 1.6. AI platform prediction is now generally available. Based on Google Kubernetes Engine backend, AI platform prediction is a new backend architecture designed for improved reliability, more flexibility via new hardware options, reduced overhead latency, and improved tail latency. In addition to standard features such as auto scaling, access logs, and request and response logging, we've introduced several updates that improve robustness, flexibility, and usability such as resource metrics, regional endpoints, the what if tool, and more. Check out the post for all the details. Please remember to like, subscribe, and share. I'm Sumit Chandel for The Developer Show. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week. Perfect, yeah. yeah, perfect, yeah. All right. <laughs>